Chapter 5 The Phantom Strikes Having returned to the familiar surroundings of the opera, Christine continued to avoid contact with Raoul. She received her lessons every day from the angel, and every night she left the glittering lights of the stage, wondering when she would be whisked away again and imprisoned in the darkness of his underground hideaway. She was sickened at the thought of his horrific face, but could do nothing if she were to protect Raoul from his jealous anger. Raoul, too, had returned to Paris and was still searching for answers. He was troubled by Christine's behavior and wanted to know what had nearly frightened him to death in Perros. Montcharmin and Richard, meanwhile, were now occupied with their own investigation into the events in Box 5. Strange things were happening elsewhere in the opera, too. Weird, shadowy figures appeared in the theatre, then seemed to disappear into thin air. Lights flickered on and off, and scenery was raised and lowered mysteriously. Talk of the Phantom was now starting to spread outside the opera, and patrons were nervously staying away. To ease the fears of their customers, the managers decided to sit in Box 5 themselves for the next performance. They would get to the bottom of this phantom business and prove it was nothing but rubbish. Carlotta had recovered from her illness and was expected to sing in her usual role, but it became obvious that someone was displeased when Montcharmin and Richard received yet another letter on the morning of her return performance. My dear Monsieur Moncharmin and Monsieur Richard, if you want to avoid war, here are my conditions. One, return box five to me immediately. Two, Christine will play the lead in tonight's performance. Carlotta will be ill. Three, you must give Madame Giry her job back. If you do not meet my terms, tonight's performance will be cursed. Be warned. The Phantom. Richard pounded his fist on the desk. That's it! We shall not give in to this ridiculous creature's demands. Carlotta, too, got a note that morning, one that sent a cold shiver down her spine. If you sing at the opera tonight, you will wish you were dead. The Phantom. Thinking Christine must be plotting to take her role for the rest of the season, Carlotta decided on a plan of her own. She asked all her friends to come to the opera that night to cheer and applaud her, so that everyone would think she was the more popular of the two performers. That night, there was not an empty seat in the opera. Montcharmin and Richard settled into Box 5 to enjoy the performance. Carlotta was superb, and Christine had returned to sing in the chorus. She could see Raoul in his private box. It was as close as she could be to him under her angel's watchful eye. Suddenly, as Carlotta was singing the most beautiful song in the opera, the scenery behind her began to rise and fall out of control, sending stagehands and scene changers running for the ropes to bring it back into place. Before they could act, a mountain of wood, canvas and paint smashed onto the stage, inches from Carlotta. The shocked singer fainted and had to be carried from the stage. Almost immediately, when it seemed that nothing more dreadful could happen, a horrendous cracking sound was heard coming from the highest point in the auditorium. Then, as all eyes looked up to the ceiling, the thousand glistening lights of the great crystal chandelier crashed down into the audience, plunging the opera into near darkness. Everyone flew into a panic, and the police arrived, searching everywhere for the managers. At the same time, a dark, cloaked figure, holding a fragile young form, swept across the stage on a rope 
and disappeared into the wings. Montcharmin and Richard were beside themselves with fear and frustration. Not only were they frightened into giving Madame Giry back her job that very night, they also stopped laughing at the phantom. Christine did not struggle when she realized who had snatched her from the darkened stage. She recognized his bony grasp and knew it would be useless. Once again, she crossed from the outer world of the living into his world. She thought sadly of Raoul. During the next few days, Raoul searched everywhere for her. He then remembered Madame Valerius. When he called at her little flat, a maid showed him to the elderly woman. The Viscount de Chenille is here to see you, Madame. Madame, I cannot find Christine. She has disappeared. I've looked everywhere. Do you know where she is? Please, I am desperate. Madame Valerius's kind expression became serious. She's with the Angel of Music, my friend. Raoul could hardly believe what he was hearing, but let the dear old woman continue. Madame Valerius put a finger to her lips and spoke in a whisper. What I'm going to tell you, you can never repeat. I'm telling you only because I know how much Christine cares for you. Raoul, you and Christine can never be together. But why? The Angel of Music would never allow it. She belongs to him. He is her teacher, her companion, her master. Each night at the opera, when hardly a soul is left, she has her singing lessons with the angel. Without his blessing, her voice would not have become so perfect. It was her greatest dream, but a tragic one for both of you. Raoul was furious. Who was this angel of music and why was he controlling Christine? Distressed by his younger brother's suffering, the Count too did his best to discourage Raoul's relationship with Christine. He told him he had seen her in a carriage with another man, hoping that it would put him off. His plan failed, however, when Raoul raced to the opera, determined to find her. He waited night after night in the freezing cold outside, longing to see his beautiful Christine. At last, his patience was rewarded. Late one night, he saw a beautiful face looking out of a carriage window. Christine! He called out to her, but she only turned her head away as the carriage drove off into the night. As it pulled away, Raoul saw a note fall to the ground. My dear Raoul, please do not try to see me again. You must forget me or we shall both be in terrible danger. Christine. After a fortnight, no one had seen Christine, but Raoul was sure she was somewhere close by. Again, he waited, hidden in the shadows outside her dressing room. At last, he saw her slip quietly inside. Through a crack in the door, he watched and listened. Her words startled him. Eric? Eric? Are you there? Raoul's entire body tensed. He saw Christine with her arms stretched out towards the mirror in front of her. Eric? I'm waiting for you. As she walked towards the mirror, its surface began to shimmer like sunshine on a lake. Then suddenly, in a blinding flash of light, she was gone. How and why did she keep disappearing? Raoul had lost her once more, but now at least he had a clue to the identity of the angel. The name Eric. Christine stumbled in the dark, but Eric's bony hands caught her before she could fall. She didn't want him to touch her but knew that she could not refuse to go with him or Raoul would be in danger. As they descended into the gloomy dampness of the cellars and rode across the lake, 
Christine was silent. When they entered his house, he spoke softly to her. You've been loyal to me, Christine, and I can no longer keep this from you. I am not your angel of music, but I am the one they call the Phantom of the Opera. Christine was horrified. It was more than she could stand. Come, my dear, let me show you the rest of my world. Please think of this house as your home, my love. It is yours to share with me as my wife. Eric grasped her trembling hand and placed a gold ring on it. I beg you, Christine, never let this ring leave your finger. Christine felt sick, but she knew she must promise this to him if she were to protect Raoul. As Eric walked her through the gloomy house, she was nearly overcome by the heavy atmosphere and musty smell. Dark, oversized furniture of carved wood and red velvet filled the rooms, and dozens of candles provided the only light. There were no mirrors, no windows. The touch of his horrible hand on hers made her feel even sicker, and she feared she could not remain in that awful place one more minute. At last, she found the courage to plead. Eric, may I beg you to take your kindness one step further? I'm feeling quite overwhelmed by all this. Could you find it in your heart to allow me a short time with Madame Valerius to recover my strength? His terrible gaze met her soft blue eyes and the strange part of him that loved her responded. Very well, my dear, this once, but don't become too accustomed to such outings. <laughs> 